pleasure of speaking with Justin Cochran from Carbon Streaming Corporation. How are you today? Hi, Tracy. Nice to be here. Nice to see you again. First of all, let's start by congratulating you. You're on the fast track to list on NASDAQ, correct? We are. Yes. Very excited to get that finalized here in the hopefully in the coming weeks. And of course, anybody out there looking for carbon credits or an ESG friendly company, you cannot get any friendlier than carbon streaming. Can you give us a couple of your updates about what you're doing now with your, let's talk about your acquisition plan of action moving forward. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. We, we have a very big focus and team now, uh, seven full-time individuals who are working on an investment pipeline of, of over 200 million uh, uh, in near-term investments, so defined as less than 12 months, uh, amongst a greater pipeline of over $700 million in size. So a team that's very focused, and I'm super excited about what this portfolio is, is, is shaping up to be here over the next couple of months. Um, and that's a big focus for the company is getting some new deals announced, as we've been working on this pipeline for over two and a half years. So the market's noticing your story, institutions are noticing your story, and you're attracting, well, business rock stars onto your board. Would you like to talk about one of your most recent additions? Uh, of, of course. Uh, we did add Alice Schroeder to the board in early January. Uh, Alice is exactly as you described her, an absolute rock star. She's a former Wall Street analyst for over a decade, spent her entire career on Wall Street, uh, now sits on, on several public and private company boards, including HSBC, a uh, former board member of, of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, just a tremendous addition to the team. She wrote Snowball, the, the, the Warren Buffett story, uh, so extremely well known, uh, and she's been, just been a fantastic addition. It's just in the few board meetings that she's been able to join and, and, and very excited for her contribution to the company. So carbon credit, credits, you're a very personable communicator. I think I was first, you know, introduced to them through the Milken Institute at least a decade or so ago. But I find most people in North America are not uh, as up to date or educated on them as our, our friends in Europe, for instance. Um, right. Are you going to be doing any seminars or are there any places on your website where you can help people learn more about uh, this fast growth area? Yeah, absolutely. It's a fantastic question. I would say I'm, I'm almost daily and certainly weekly participating in new conferences, uh, new in industry associations, um, uh, talks such as these to provide market awareness, both around carbon streaming, of course, but also carbon credits. But I would also encourage uh, listeners to go onto our website, uh, just carbonstreaming.com. We've got some fantastic blogs, visual capitalist reports, uh, information that people can click on to, to learn not only about carbon credits, learn about our fantastic projects spread around the world and what we're doing. Um, there are some great resources uh, with others in this space as well, but, but there's some great resources on that website and encourage people to, uh, to go check those out. Okay. And of course you can find them right here. There's been a lot of announcements from the White House recently having to do with environmental concerns. Can you tell me if any of these latest updates are benefiting you directly or in, indirectly or getting phone calls? Can you comment on this? Well, there's, there's no question that you now have a, a wholesale commitment and we see it coming out of the Biden White, White House um, moving towards disclosure around ESG policies uh, disclosure of scope one, scope two, and even scope three emissions if they're material to a company. These changes are, are, are increasing the focus uh, that companies have to put on their plans to become ESG friendly and, and what their emissions are and what they're going to be doing to reduce those emissions. And of course, we'll put it in focus for uh, for, for investment analysts, for, for investors into these companies to say, what actions, what active actions are these companies taking um, to reduce their, their, their carbon footprint? That is all tremendously positive, I believe, for our industry, because this is an industry that needs trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of investment if we want to get serious about fighting climate change. And we as a company are, are here to support it. First public company uh, in existence uh, in Canada and the U.S. to publicly invest in climate projects and do that by way of, of carbon credits and um, 
uh, and I believe we're at the forefront of an industry that's going to be here for decades to come. So in a recent update, you were providing investor talk audience members about, you were talking about how carbon credits, you secure the, the credit revenue annually. Is that correct? That is correct. So these projects, they're, they're quite unique in that every year we send an auditor out to these projects to go and review and ensure that the project is doing what it said it was going to do. And so if it's protecting native vegetation, a mangrove, a peat swamp, an auditor is going out to these projects and they prepare an audit that then is used as the basis of, of issuing and verifying credits, that does tend to happen once a year. And, and so then every year, once a year, we get delivered credits and we would then look to sell and uh, sell those credits uh, in the following 12 months. So here's the question all of the trading junkies out there are going to be wondering. They're gonna be wondering, will that impact your share price during that time? I mean, is that a time period that you put out for investors? You were gonna be you know, getting this audit in on, certain, on a certain date. Have you noticed any trends or cycles around that? So we get a lot of questions from the buying universe on exactly the, 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 the times around when our credit's gonna be issued. When I say buying universe, the, the buyers of our carbon credits, I haven't had too many questions from the investment community on that uh, yet. What I would say is one of the benefits of, of what we're doing is building a diversified portfolio. So our plan, of course, over the next couple of years is that we have 50 projects delivering credits from 50 different places around the world, all coming in at very different points in, in time over that year. So, um, so it will sort of spread out the credits, if you will, uh, across the, the year. So there won't be so much variability. And that's the, you know, that's our, that's our hope. Well, Justin, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, for everybody out there interested in the ESG uh, investment sector, this is a wonderful starting point. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Tracy.